Are you ready to hoist the colors? Now, time for the most in-depth look at the world of ECU athletics. Welcome in to Hoist the Colors with your host, Stephen Igo on 94.3 The Game. Watch the show live on Facebook and at 94.3thegame.com. Now, here's your host, Stephen Igo. All right, welcome in. Hoist the Colors, Monday, April 8th. We are live on YouTube, Facebook, and more. Uh, Twitter, X, whatever they call it these days. Feel free to leave a comment. A question, a suggestion, we'll take it throughout uh, the next hour. Big week for East Carolina baseball. We had our chat with head coach Cliff Godwin earlier. We'll uh, replay that around 1230. And uh, we start off the show visiting with Carter Cunningham, ECU first baseman, fresh off his trip uh, to Boca Raton. And you guys won three out of four on the road this week, Carter. So had to feel pretty good coming back home and getting to sleep in your old bed last night, right? Yeah, it was huge. I actually washed my sheets right before I left. Okay. So I got to like come home to a clean bed. It was awesome. There's nothing like that fresh sheet feeling, right? No, there's actually – it's like not. <laughs> you can't – there's nothing like it. I don't know how to describe it. Series win, fresh sheets. I mean, you probably slept pretty good. Yeah, I got my whoop recovery. So, like, whenever I change, whenever I get clean sheets, I swear my my recovery is like always better. I got like eighty eight percent recovery wow. last night, so that was awesome. So, whoop recovery. I, I, so, I'm unfamiliar. How is that? Like, it just measures. I don't know your sleep. sleep? Yeah, I don't really know the <laughs> ins and outs. I know that heart rate variability is like the one key thing that drives the recovery. Okay. Um, and it, you want it to be as high as possible, and it was high last night, so I got good recovery there because go. of the sheets because I slept good. The sheets. Yeah. The sheets got it done. Uh, good. Well, hey, a uh, great way to start a new week, and, and you need good sleep, man, because you all have a busy week coming yeah. up, five games. We'll get into that. You all sort of tell me you got a lot of classwork and everything going on too, so, you know, exams, all that coming up as well, or, uh, you know, getting to their final project time. Um, so, so let's get into this, this past week, Carter. I mean, I said going in, look, four games on the road. This was one of y'all's toughest weeks. Um, great opponents, NC State. We know the deal there, FAU. So to go three and one, how would you kind of assess the team's performance this past week? Yeah, I mean, I was super proud of the guys all week. Um, obviously, you start at State, in-state rival. We hadn't won there in a very long time. Um, and we've been saying it, but like – how this team is different and I told the guys like this is a great opportunity to prove to ourselves um and I mean to the fans if you want but really to ourselves that like this is who we are and uh to come out and really have a great game against them was huge and then go on the road and play FAU who they're really good at their home ballpark and to take the series there was was awesome and um yeah it just solidified um, our belief in ourselves, which is at the end of the day, all that all that really matters. Aaron Groller said after Tuesday's <clears throat> game, you know, kind of he felt the team was so tight knit and, and so together. He felt like this was the team to kind of answer that challenge of going on the road to NC State and winning first time since '09. And I always say, look, it's not like y- y'all as the players, it's not y'all's fault that the team hasn't won since '09. Like y'all just happen to be on the team <laughs> yeah. now. Uh, like everybody kind of equates that. Um, same thing with like ECU basketball not winning. Well, it's not the players' fault they haven't won since whenever. But um, either way, y'all took that challenge and kind of ran with it. Did y'all talk about that going into the game at all, or was it more just the process focusing on that? Um, we, I, I think Coach Godwin like mentioned like he hasn't won there since his since he took over as coach, um, and that was mentioned briefly. But uh, historically, like the teams that I've been on, and Jada has been here longer than than I have. Um, we were just talking like we've never even played well at NC State like they weren't even like good games um, so we were just talking about like we got to just change that like this year and and, and with this team and uh, we had the opportunity to do it and I, yeah like I said I just told the guys this was this was a great opportunity for us to prove to ourselves who we are and we we stepped up to the plate. And, uh, you know, a lot was uh, made about the Alec Makarevich situation. I won't you know, put you under that, uh, you know, having to answer all that stuff. But I, I thought Dixon Williams played great, ECU third baseman. And yeah. he had the big hit. Like, I always feel like, not that the game is necessarily decided in the early innings, but I always feel like at times ECU has gotten behind at NC State early, and y'all were able to get on them. He yeah. had a big two-out hit. Maybe, I don't know, does something like that allow y'all to, to not relax, but – kind of settle in a little bit as a team no doubt it was like I remember just watching that at bat from the dugout and um just seeing that ball drop it was like all right we like we we got this like we were in control of this game and um 
that was huge, especially two out RBIs. They we talk about it a lot, but they win championships, and so uh, for for Dixon to do that, and he's the hometown kid, and against his rival school, like that was like the picture perfect moment um, for him and his family. And so, uh, but yeah, it, it just put us at, at ease, and it's much easier to play from from the lead than from behind. So yeah, go to FAU. Trey is Savage, man, he was uh, elite yeah. on Friday. Just what can you say about Trey and the ways pitching? <laughs> Anytime we get Trey on the mound, it's like you're going to have a, ch a chance to win. Um, even I think the two losses that we've had when he was pitching, it wasn't his fault. It was our offense just wasn't good enough that day. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he's the ultimate competitor, and we're <laughs> we're lucky to have him go out every Friday night. 11 strikeouts. And uh, so so when you face Trey in inner squads, like, I don't know, like looking at his splitter on TV, uh, like, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's just like. I don't know it's how there. anybody hits it, man. <laughs> it's funny because, like, some of their hitters that got to first base yeah. uh, on Friday, like, they were talking to me, and they 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 mentioned the splitter, and I was like, yeah, it's, it's there until it's not there. I like, mean, it, it looks nasty. there, and then it's just, it falls off the table, and it's not fair. Did you ever foul one off or make contact in a scrimmage or anything? I think I accidentally, like, barreled one. Okay. Closed my eyes, and, like, it just happened to hit my barrel. And uh, But, yeah, he's, those ABs aren't fun against Trey. And uh, y'all get that Friday win. Saturday's game, obviously, a tough loss, 6-5. Uh, to five. FAU able to walk it off. Uh, I thought, again, y'all y'all battled. Just maybe some uncharacteristic thing. I thought at times, you know, second and third, nobody out. Like, there were some situations where y'all are usually really good yeah. getting those runners in. And um, just so happened in that game, it didn't work out. But responding to that on Sunday, how key was that to – and an early deficit to respond and, and bounce back win the series. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we had talked about it after the game on Saturday, and uh, I think it really goes to show us and the fans, whoever watches ECU baseball, like how great we are at getting those runners in uh, when the opportunity presents itself and how when you don't do it, it makes the difference in, in, a, in a ball game. And so that was a good learning opportunity because I don't think like we've really had uh, – we, that's not like our MO. Like we've – we've prided ourselves on that. And so that was a good learning opportunity to really emphasize how important that is. And then, yeah, obviously getting down Sunday, three, nothing, I think it was three, nothing. Yeah. Um, and just continuing to battle back. I mean, Jake Hunter ate up some, some of those middle innings for us and just kept us right, right there. And uh, we were able to just c continue to add on and scratch. And then we had that big inning that kind of broke it open. And so our bullpen, was awesome Sunday. I thought the, the hitters were just resilient in the box yesterday, and um, it was just a, it was a great team win and a great series win. You had the what was it the hit and run where you <laughs> laced the ball into yeah. right center, so that you had a two run single on that. I know you got a second, but that yeah. had to feel pretty good. Uh, great great moment there, uh, and that's executing in those big spots. So take us through that at bat, you know, jumping on that pitch. Yeah, coach actually called a timeout before um, because there was right. a scenario. I think it was Friday. I want to say it was Friday or Saturday where it was the same scenario. There's a hit and run, and there's a run and hit. Hit and run is like, yeah, you have to swing. Right. Run and hit is like, hey, that guy's going to run. You don't have to swing uh, unless it's like a good pitch. And I remember he – I can't remember if it was Friday or Saturday, but Riley was on first. I got run and hit, and I swung, and I was like – I just wasn't on time, and it was a really poor AB. I swung at the first – it was a strike, but it just – it was a bad AB on my part. Um, and then he calls a timeout on yesterday on Sunday, and he's like, "Hey, Riley's going to take off here. Only swing if it's a pitch you can handle." And so it was. I didn't have to swing, but it was a, a middle middle heater, um, and I made sure I was going to be on time for that one and not screw screw it up again like I did on on Friday or whatever day it was. And uh, yeah, I just got a pitch I could handle and drove it up the middle. And then Riley, like, did you see the slide? <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> like, epic, man. Like I love that kid. He literally just like he just like flew into home plate. <laughs> Uh, uh, you, you, like you see him like flip over catchers all the time, and like, oh, I don't know. Like just thinking about how the way he plays the game, like that is so entertaining to watch. Just Riley, just w put a camera on Riley Johnson and, and do it. I was happy that he was finally safe on one of those. I feel like yeah. he always does like an epic slide, and somehow gets tagged out. This time yeah. he was finally safe, so yeah. I was happy to see that. It was awesome. Um, and speaking of you know Riley, like what he's doing with his his shoulders, like he's having to play through some a lot of yeah. discomfort. Cliff Goblin said earlier that he like barely even swings during the week just because he's trying to stay healthy. So, yeah. what's it like watching your teammate not only make those entertaining plays but leave it all on yeah. the line? I mean that's like the definition of ECU baseball, I think. And Riley just embodies that. And uh, 
the toughness and the grit that he shows just being able to play as much as he does um, is huge. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it just shows the toughness that he has and how he just embodies the ECU baseball. I do want to bring up, too, you kind of teased him. Uh, we had the tiebreaker show uh, <laughs> yeah. a few weeks ago, and you were like, you don't have to worry about you know paying for uh, yeah. Riley on the homers that help. But uh, I think he hit, what, two after that? Yeah. So it worked out pretty good. Yeah, right? I'm doing 10 bucks for everyone, everyone that he hits, so good for Riley. I'll, I'll give him 20 bucks. So you think he's got more in him? I do. I told him after I got off that tiebreaker show, I was like, I'm, you got five in you. And he hit two that weekend. I mean, I, I don't – I want the guy to hit as many as he can, so – uh, but he does. So you've hit seven, which leads the team. And uh, you're – are you ponying up for yourself, too? What, 25? Yeah, 25. For every home run? Yeah. What is that, one, uh, 175? Yeah, 175. Dang. So are you going broke? It's actually like – that's like what I got <laughs> in my bank account right now. <laughs> well, hey, uh, we'll, we'll try and help you out with uh, these appearances. But I do want to mention – Interbanks Media, um, we ho- so uh, we hosted the Interbanks Media uh, Children's Miracle Network Radiothon the last uh, two days of last week, raised 110000 for Maynard's Children's Hospital, uh, and that number, Henry Hinton was telling me, is still going up. And he's actually got your sponsorship for the Homer th- Homers That Help on April 23rd against NC State. So I do want to give you a chance to continue to plug Homers That Help because yep. it's awesome work for the uh, the Children's Hospital. You continue to do that. So uh, give us an update there on how that process is going. Yeah, so after the Radiothon, um, I was just talking to Mr. Hinton. I think they had over $100,000 raised in that one day. Um, and then we, Homer, Homers That Help, just surpassed $17,000. Um, I think we raised a little over $1,000 that day. Uh, because they were able to get me on for a short yeah. radio bit, which was awesome. Um, but yeah, it's been it's really taken off, and I mean we're halfway through the season and we're at seventeen thousand. Um, I set a goal of thirty thousand, which I think is super attainable uh, with the amount of games and the amount of home runs left to be hit. And so um, I'm excited for the future of it. And uh, like I said, I I can't continue to express my gratitude to uh, towards the Greenville community because they've just stepped up to the stepped up to stepped up to the plate in a tremendous way, and I'm super thankful for it. And I've heard Parker Bird also talk a lot about <clears throat> how he is kind of a guy who could continue this uh, yeah. after your time is done. So, th- and we've touched on this on other shows as well. But this is something you want to continue to 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 happen even after you're done playing. Yeah, and I I kind of pulled Parker aside <laughs> because uh, when and I've mentioned this before. I don't know if I've said it on here. I know I've talked to a lot of people about it, but like whenever Parker's in that room. It's like his God-given ability and talent. Like God created Parker just to help impact those people. And um, I know he's got greater plans for Parker than just that. But like, I don't say anything when I when I'm with Parker because I let him. I throw him in the room and I just sit back and watch because he's incredible at uh, at what he does and and helping those families. And so um, I kind of pulled him aside and I'm like, dude, this is your project to run with uh, when I'm gone. So it's definitely going to be here for years to. Uh, years down the road, and I'm excited to see where Parker takes it, and I hope he makes it even better than than I could. So, homers that help again, all this uh, <clears throat> helping out the uh, the Children's Hospital, and so people, if they just want to give, they can text the number. Do you have that off the top of your head? Yeah, uh, all caps, homers to uh, five one five five five. Okay, all caps, homers to five one five five five. If you want to contribute, so great stuff there from Carter Cunningham and ECU baseball. <laughs> Uh, you look like you still got your mustache kind of going as well from Mustache Marks. I don't yeah, know. I haven't shaved it in 23 years. <laughs> <laughs> it looks looks good. Where did where'd you finish in the bracket? I was the first round exit. Like okay. every every single year, I thought this year I went up against Colby Wallace, who's a freshman, and I thought like maybe I could get like a fan vote first round first round win, but nope. I couldn't even get that. Mm. So it's well, all good. Hey. we all have our strengths and weaknesses, yeah, man. It it's is all what good. It is. Uh, you're doing great stuff. All right, let's get a break in. Uh, Carter Cunningham, he'll visit with us for another segment before we get to our Cliff Galvin interview. We'll be right back. This is Hoist the Colors. New Toyotas, zero down, and only $369 a month at Greenville Toyota during the Great Rate Sales Event. Buy with 0% or get Corollas, $369 a month with zero down. This is not a lease. You own it. Plus, get our Greenville Advantage at Greenville Toyota. Acre Station Meat Farm, along with Lane Angus Beef, bring you Farm to Fork Beef. Stock your freezers now with affordable beef boxes, just in time for the grilling season. Farm to Fork Beef brings quality local beef to your family. From your traditional butcher shop, Acre Station Meat Farm. 
Come on down to Acre Station Meat Farm and find out why we're number one in fresh cuts and friendly service. Acre Station Meat Farm, Highway 32 North, Pine Town. Other restaurants claim their food is fresh and fast, but are they friendly? At Moore's, you're treated like family the minute you walk into their doors. With locations in Winterville, New Bern, Swansboro, Moorhead City, and Jacksonville, we've been practicing what we preach since 1945. At Moore's, our barbecue is slow cooked and smoked over real wood daily until it's so tender it's falling off the bone. Combined with our fresh chicken, cooked to order seafood, and homemade fixins, we're sure you'll agree. If it's not Moore's, it's less. You know what the problem is with standard belts? Usually you have to choose between too tight or the opposite, too loose. But with Anson Belt and Buckle, you don't have to choose. We got rid of the holes and instead have a track system designed for micro adjustability. That way you can enjoy a perfect fit every time. Anson Belt and Buckle. Find your perfect fit today. is as special as this, you don't want to change a thing. You simply want to enjoy it, just as it is. That was our inspiration behind Bow Coast West, our newest community in Beaufort, North Carolina. Embrace all that we love about this very special place and make it easy for families to enjoy all that this coastal lifestyle has to offer. Be inspired. Bow Coast West. She fine. Hope she can sing it to me one more time. Get low. Get low, get low, get low. To the window. To the window. To the wild. To the wild. Grab a Pepsi Wild Jerry and get wild. Ready to save thousands with a great rate? Get 0% financing at Greenville Toyota during the Great Rate Sales Event. Shop our massive inventory of new Toyotas, available as low as 0%. Hurry to Greenville Toyota today, where our volume saves you money. Here there be pirates. Back to Hoist the Colors with Steve and I go. How good is this? On 94.3 The Game. All right, welcome back in. Hoist the Colors on this Monday. Carter Cunningham is with us, visiting... And uh, good to have Carter in studio uh, on this April 8th edition. So, five games ahead on the week to come, Carter. What, how, how we kind of touched on it earlier, but how important is it to get that the rest today, knowing that y'all do have a grind of a week coming up? I mean, not only does it take a physical toll, but a mental toll. You got to be ready to go in all aspects in this week, right? Yeah. I th- what, five games in six days this yeah. week? Yeah. Uh, two midweek games so it's a little bit a little bit different than our than our typical week so today we're uh really just resting and uh getting treatment we're going to get a good lift in and uh be be ready to go tomorrow uh, focus on tomorrow's game and then we'll worry about whatever whatever else is to come it just feels like y'all haven't had the opportunity to play a lot of midweek games at home i mean i think there's been maybe one uncw i think that might be it i think that's it because i've only seen the pinstripes once so how good is it to know that you're going to be at home this whole week, though? I mean, y'all played a lot of road games, and I think yeah. it's 18 of the last 25 regular season games y'all are scheduled to be at home. So that's really? going to be, yeah, pretty I didn't nice. know that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it certainly has felt like we've been on the road a lot, and especially coming off a week where uh, we travel for all four games. Um, to be in front of our, the best fans in the country uh, for five straight games is a huge opportunity for us and gives us a lot of confidence for sure rematch with elon and again y'all play odu again so what's it like just kind of y'all have seen these teams once you, there's a, at least a level of familiarity there does that i don't know help at all or is it just kind of another game uh i mean it's sort of another game for us i know the coaches uh definitely take a lot of notes and take a lot they watch a lot of video and they just uh get us prepared to uh, for for whoever we play, so um, they'll be prepared, and so will we. And Coach Godwin was saying earlier, you know, doubtful that we'll see Shinkman or Hunter in the midweek given their workload. So yeah. other, you know, some other arms are going to have to step up. And, and he was like, we need the older guys on the team to encourage some of those guys. So what's that process like? And maybe that falls more on the older pitchers, but just to get those guys ready because we know they're talented. Carter, yeah. it's just maybe they need to get out there and, and kind of show they can do it. Yeah. Um, 
the past two to three weeks, you know, we've kind of gone to the same guys, both position player and pitching wise, uh, off the bench. Um, but when you got a schedule with five or yeah, with five games in six days, like you're going to need everybody. And so, um, that was sort of something that we kept reinforcing even throughout those two to three weeks where we were going to the same guys is like, you got to be prepared. Like you gotta, you gotta be ready for when your name's going to be called because weeks like this, like your name will be called. And, uh, if you don't believe in yourself and believe in your stuff, then it's not going to happen, but you need to perform, but more importantly, like the team needs to perform. So we need you to, to do well. And I would assume offensively too, y'all know in these, in these scenarios, there could be some higher scoring games too. So it's like, everybody's got to step up, I would say. A hundred percent. And we're, I mean, yeah, we're going to utilize our bench and we're probably going to get some fresh bodies in there position player wise. And so, uh, yeah, emphasizing the fact that like you, you just got to stay ready and, and you don't know when your name's going to be called, but, but be ready for when it is. Carter Cunningham with us here. Uh, you know, we talked about your savage earlier, Carter. How about Wyatt Lunzer Chinkman? Yeah. What, what he's doing nine appearances in a row he's got multiple innings you know he, he got out of a big jam yesterday got the save he's just a workhorse right now absolute workhorse um yeah i mean he just comes comes into the game and he's nails like it's gives the hitters a lot of confidence and the defense a lot of confidence when when that guy's running and running in from the bullpen and um you just know you you're you're going to be in a tight game every anytime he, he comes in to pitch but uh that he's going to f- uh fill up the strike zone and make his defense work behind them, and it's a lot of fun to watch him pitch. We were talking about Trey's splitter earlier. How about uh, Shinkman's slider? Is that yeah. – I don't know, what, what's a better pitch? <sighs> you know, you that's could, a good question. If you could steal one, which one mm. would you want to steal? It's a good question. I would say as a as a lefty, it's probably easier to hit Shankman's slider. Not saying that it's easy, but yeah. it's easier than, a, than Trey's splitter. Um, but same thing yesterday, like uh, – one of their FAU pinch hitters comes in and Shank walked him, I think on like five pitches. He didn't swing the bat, but he gets down to first and he's like, I didn't even see that slider. <laughs> and I was like, I know. He was like, he could have just thrown that right down the middle three times. I would have struck out. I was like, I know, buddy. I think that's what he was trying to do. He just missed. Yeah, he just missed. Twice. He got lucky. Um, yeah, that thing is, uh, when, it's, when it's snapping off, like he threw the one, three, two with the bases loaded yeah. and got the call to strike. Like that. I mean, what can you do if you're the hitter, man? Nah, I mean, nothing. That's, that's brutal. Um, so he's doing great work. Obviously, Danny Bill has been a war- workhorse too. I know he had a tough, tough day Saturday. But I mean, for Danny, and he's a fellow senior like yourself. Like, I'm sure, I'm sure he was disappointed, but he's probably ready to get back out there and and yeah. kind of answer the bell a little bit, right? Yeah, we got full confidence in Danny. Yeah, I mean, he's stepped. He's he's done great the past couple of weeks, and um, yeah, I mean, he it's baseball. <laughs> like, yep. it, it is what it is now. No doubt, no doubt, Danny Bill doing his thing. So, uh, again, big week coming up, five home games. Also, Saturday should be a huge crowd because the baseball game's at four, the spring game's at one. Charlotte coming into town, I know you are focused on the midweek games first, but it uh, the weather looks good. should be a great crowd uh, this weekend. So, we were scheduled to have or looking to have Jacob Starlin in today. Uh, Carter, uh, unable to make it. You know, Coach talked about earlier dealing with the oblique. Um We'll touch on Jacob first. Like, yeah, I know he was back in his home state of Florida, so I'm sure he was disappointed yeah. he couldn't go. Just kind of where his spirit's at right now when, when you've talked to Jacob. Yeah. Um, he was a tremendous teammate this past weekend. Um, and I know for him, it's hard to sit there and watch games, especially in his home state of Florida, where um, he wants to be a part of the action. Um, but he was fantastic in the dugout for us. And, he was helping Colby Wallace and Nathan Christman and Dixon Williams navigate second base and third base. And, um, yeah, he, I mean, his, his spirits are high. I know he wants to be out there, but right now his role is to be the best teammate, and that's exactly what he did this week. So I was super proud of him. And then we saw, you know, like you mentioned, Colby Wallace plays from third. He's got a cannon over there. Yeah, he does. So it looks th- good. When he throws it across the diamond, it's coming at you pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he made some great plays. Dixon Williams playing some second. Um, how, so how's first base? You're about halfway through the season. Uh, Chuck wants to know, does Carter like playing one position over another? So how would you kind of answer that? Yeah. Um, I, I used to immediately say outfield. Um, but now working with coach Palumbo and obviously Cam Clanch has been a huge help, uh, in my defensive, uh, ability. Um, I would say, I, I don't know, actually, I haven't really thought about that yeah. that recently, but I've gotten just as comfortable as I was in the outfield as I am now at first base, which is huge because I never thought I'd get to that point, um, believe it or not. But, 
uh, Coach Coach Palumbo's done a tremendous job, and uh, I owe all the credit to him. Uh, so, how much extra work? Because I know y'all put in a lot in the off season, but like still in season, are y'all doing more? You know, yeah. whether it be footwork, glove work at first. Yeah, it's still footwork. Mm, I think it's almost every day. Yeah, uh, working with Coach Palumbo out there. And then just, I mean, that increases your versatility. I'm, I'm sure, obviously, you you told me a few weeks ago you had a job interview, but if possible, I'm sure you'd like to play at the next level. So, yeah. I mean, that versatility playing first and alpha has got to help too, right? I would hope so. Um, yeah. I'll have to ask the scouts. I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so Johnny Robertson says Carter has had an RBI or score to run in a remarkable 25 of 30 games. I'm guessing you didn't know that. Cool. Yeah, but, I didn't know uh, that. It's pretty cool. So Good stat. Good stat. Johnny always Thank brings you, Johnny. stats. Uh, he's a he's he's a wizard. I don't even know how he follows this stuff, yeah. but uh, he does his thing. Um, so yeah, Jacob Starlin again out this week. Cliff Goblin said earlier, probably best case scenario, be back Friday. Um, you know, depending on what happens with kind of his recovery. But we, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier, Carter. You've kind of shared this in the past, like even midway through last year, you weren't necessarily a full time starter but you got your opportunity, you were ready, and, like, sometimes you just have to be ready in those instances and make the most of them, which is, you know, what Colby did this past weekend and other guys as well. Yeah, and I, like, I don't know if I've, like, really told this story to the entire team, but I know I know, I know I've said it on here a couple of times, but, like, and I don't like talking about myself, but yeah. halfway through the season, last season, you know, like, we're at Cincinnati in a conference matchup, and, like, I'm not even playing. Like, I don't start in any of those games. I, I get a couple of ABs here and there. Um, and that goes to show you, like, I ended up being first team all conference with, and I wasn't even a starter halfway through, like, at the midway point. So, like, that just goes to show, like, it's never too late for that person to get an opportunity and run with it. And you, you just always have to be ready for uh, when your name's called. And we talked too about you being pretty free. You know, you've talked about your religion a lot and kind of your faith and um, how that's allowed you. To play. And I mean, you can see it on TV and, and watching a person like. I don't want to say like you're going up there not caring, but you're you're just you're free, like you're the pressure's off you, so you don't even like worry about it. And yeah. um it's just it's been fun to watch. So I know that's been a big part of your success too, is like you're just kind of leaving somebody else's hands. So yeah. God knows the outcome before it happens. And every time I pray, um, when I'm on the on deck circle, it's just for his will to be carried out and for for him to be glorified in whatever I do during that at bat and um, I, I mean, I don't know if this is true or not. I tell myself, like, I think he's granted me the success that I've had this year because he knows that, like, I'm not, I'm not going to brag or, or boast about it. And I'm just going to give all the glory to him because he deserves all the glory. And it's like, I, yeah, he's just using me as a vessel right now. And you, so even when you line out at first, you're just like, yeah. he, knew, yeah, he knew that was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So you just. <laughs> Go back to the dugout. It is what it is, man. Get him yeah. next time. So. It's definitely kept me level-headed. Uh, and, I yeah. mean, not to say, like, I mean, my teammates know, like, there's so many Bs where, like, I'm just like, dang, like, I just screwed that one up. Like, I, I get pissed at myself right. a lot. Um, but uh, it's during those times where I just got to remember, like, it's, you know, he's got a greater plan for, for me. And um, not only that, but I also have to be a good example for my teammates if I'm going to call myself a leader. So, last thing for you, Carter, before we get you out of here, we've talked about the five-game week. What What is the biggest challenge of – of five games in five days and and what will it take for you guys to have the success you want this week as a team i think for really any game any week you're going into it's just to be prepared for like the game ahead and from uh and coach blumba talks about this a lot but just being locked in for from pitch one to the last one and i think that's what separates uh ec baseball from a lot of other programs is the ability to like lock in for you don't know we talk about it but you don't know what pitch is going to determine the game. Like you have, you we can't determine that, um, but we can determine: Are we prepared for? It? Are we ready for what's about to happen? Are we anticipating what's about to happen? And so, that's the approach you got to take into a five-game week. Is you don't know what what pitch might get us to host a regional, host a super regional. You don't know, so you have to be ready for every single pitch that's being thrown, and that's difficult over five games in six days, but. Um, that's why we do the mission week. We do the three hundreds. We do all those things to build that mental strength and mental toughness. All right. Speaking of uh, not looking ahead, unfortunately, we got a question about ODU. So I'm going to ask it, but you can give the 
the PR answer if you want. Uh, Jake wants to know, are you guys excited to get a little revenge on ODU after the walk-off they had last time around? So, again, take care of Elon first yeah. and then ODU. But uh, it is what it is, I guess. Yeah, no. Um, ODU is always a good program. Um, it was definitely a good game last time we were uh, at their place. And, yeah, getting walked off never feels good by any means. So, um, yeah, we'll be ready for them. But like you said, we got to take care of Elon tomorrow. All right, he is Carter Cunningham. Carter, appreciate it as always, man. Keep doing your thing, and uh, you're doing great work on and off the field. So really appreciate the time. I appreciate you guys. Absolutely. That's Carter Cunningham. We'll have him back on again later in the season. Let's get a break in. We'll visit with Cliff Goblin on the other side. Patrick, Patrick Johnson and I caught up with him earlier today, and we'll have that conversation. This is Hoist the Colors. Hi, I'm D.R. Alligood. And I'm his daughter, Jessica. For 11 years, we have built quality driveways and parking lots for both your residential and commercial needs. We also offer free on-site quotes to have your custom driveways built the way you want. 252-946-1227. about you, your family, and the health of all who live in Eastern North Carolina. This is about the transformation of a health system into something more powerful and more human, about creating new ways to treat disease and keep you well. This is about ECU Health, which is to say, it's really all about you. ECU Health, minds, hearts, purpose. Fifth Street Hardware is the home of the $9 lunch special Tuesday through Fridays. $9 specials every day, including the famous Burger Day on Tuesdays, Flatbread Pizza Wednesday, the famous Fifth Street Hardware Reuben on Thursday, and Fried Fish or Shrimp on Friday. Plus, trivia on Wednesday nights and live music every Thursday nights. And the Prime Rib Brunch Buffet has returned on Sundays. You heard that right. The Brunch Buffet with all the great items, including Prime Rib, 5th Street Hardware in downtown Greenville. Your confidence makes everything look good. You see the world in vivid color, not black and white. Swing through your neighborhood fantastic Sam's Cut in color. And let our experienced stylists take you from everyday to extraordinary. Fantastic Sam's hair salons are locally owned and operated. Our full-service salons are conveniently located in Goldsboro, Kinston, Greenville, Newburn, Jacksonville, and Calabash. Stop in today at Fantastic Sam's, where the possibilities are endless. Hi, I'm D.R. Alligood. And I'm his daughter, Jessica. For 11 years, we have built quality driveways and parking lots for both your residential and commercial needs. We also offer free on-site quotes to have your custom driveways built the way you want. 252-946-1227. with Stephen Igo. Go. the game. One. We're talking pirate baseball. Cliff Godwin joins Stephen Igo and myself here as uh, we take a peek into uh, the goings-on in ECU baseball and get coach's perspective. Uh, a single game for Coach G on this uh, Monday no coaches show, ECU having their awards uh, banquet for athletics tonight. And Coach Godwin is uh, with us uh, here. Uh, Coach, really nice week in, uh, against a pretty quality uh, opposition, and it all started at NC State. So uh, we'll get into all of that. Congratulations, though, on the three-in-one week that was. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I thought our guys did a really good job. Four games on the road, obviously – is not easy to navigate, especially playing a rivalry game at NC State on Tuesday and then flipping around and going down to FAU, which FAU hadn't lost a weekend series at home all year. <clears throat> and, of course, you know, one of our best players not able to play. So uh, 
been able to do that. I thought that was awesome. Going back to Tuesday in that top 20 matchup uh, and uh, a couple of things. Uh, we, we could start by talking about Aaron Grohler's uh, performance. What a, an outing for him. Uh, and it seemed like uh, you felt pretty good about letting him at least get through three with the way he was pitching. He was so efficient uh, and uh, and was so economical in what he was doing. But he, I, what what impressed me is just how locked in and aggressive he was. Well, I mean, really, we wanted him to go out there and close out the first inning. I mean, we've said this a few times uh, on your show, but, uh, you know, that's got to be the mentality when we're playing some of these games is just go out there and close out the first inning and then just pass the ball to the next guy. And I thought our guys did a really good job that on Tuesday. I'm in NC State, but Groller gave us three. And, of course, we ran back out for the fourth. And um, I think it was a leadoff walk or HVP or whatever it was. And then – Turn it over to, I think, Danny Bill and, you know, just kept passing the ball. And I thought our guys did a really good job. One of, uh, to, to me at least, one of the better performances up and down the lineup at, at the plate. Uh, it just seemed like the Pirates were very aggressive in their approach on Tuesday at State. I thought our guys just were really dialed in. You know, it was about us going into uh, going into uh, Raleigh and, trying to do something that uh, ECU baseball hadn't done since 2009, which we haven't played them every year since 2009, but still it's been a lot of opportunities to go there and win a baseball game and we haven't done it. So um, I just was excited the way our guys were engaged. They have a ton of purpose and focus and intent. The energy was awesome. Um, and I thought our guys just played well, uh, which is great to see. Danny Beal uh, ended up uh, getting the win, and uh, Danny seems to be uh, heating up. I know uh, Saturday uh, things got a little rocky for him, but uh, by and large, Danny Beal is uh, seeming to peak at the right time and uh, just seems to have the, the right mentality and temperament to, to be able to take the ball as many times as you need him to in a week. Yeah, Danny's been great. You know, Saturday was a blip on the radar. Um, him and I talked after Saturday's game, and – of course, he felt terrible, but at the end of the day, it's one baseball game. It's not one year. It's not your career. So um, you've got to have a short memory when you play this game, especially when, you know, Danny, Shank, whoever it is, maybe closing out games, you got to have a short memory when it doesn't go right. Absolutely. Coach, Friday nights, Trey Savage, you know, again, just an awesome performance. And uh, the development of his splitter, Coach, how, how crucial has that been to just, you know, definitely work? It works against righties and lefties, but it almost seems like when he throws it well, they have no shot against it. Yeah, I thought Trey was really special on Friday. Um, you guys might could have told, I mean, could see on TV or whatever, but uh, I'm telling you, man, you had to throw the bar with the white. Um, the, the guy, the umpire, not that it was a bad thing, but you really had a big league strike zone, and Trey was magnificent. I mean, just – he was just as good in the seventh as he was in the first. And, you know, I told AK and, you know, they didn't have uh, the velocities up on the board. I was like, I, I don't know how hard his last fastball was, but it was hard. <laughs> the eye test said it was hard. Um, and uh, that, that's Trey's mentality. You know, I mean, he, of course, his freshman year was kind of the adrenaline junkie. But, man, when he gets to the end of his rope, he goes and gets it. And he goes and finishes it out. And. Um, you know, that seventh inning was crucial for him to go out there and get because we squandered some runs out there offensively in the seventh and eighth, I think, and, and then Shinkman was able to close it out um, in the eighth and ninth. But uh, Trey was special, and, and Shink obviously was special all week. Coach, you look at the, the weekend. I mean, obviously losing in tough fashion Saturday. FAU has momentum, you know, going into Sunday. But just the, the results to your team, you get down 3 nothing, um early in that game. And, and on Saturday, and there were times y'all, y'all struggled, obviously, getting runs in from third less than two outs, which I know you are really good at. And I thought Colby Wallace had a big hit to kind of, you know, open the door a little bit. What do you think of your team's resiliency, a, a ability to bounce back on Sunday to take the series? Uh, I, I like to say that they surprise me each and every day, you know, when things don't look like it's going well. I mean, Norby actually pitched good. We just made two errors behind him and, of course, they put up a crooked number, and, you know, FAU's feeling good about themselves because they got all the momentum. They won the day before on a walk-off. So, um, But I thought Joey Barini was a spark plug, man. Um, our guys were having a tough time getting to that left-hander's fastball, and Shaq rocketed a double, you know, down the right field line. Then Bristol Carter hits a single. Um, 
and then well, he ends up on second because of an error, and then Dixon, um, you know, gets him, you know, to third base. I just thought we started putting some at bats together, and then the next inning we just kept rolling, and you know they brought in one of their best relievers. Uh, I forget the guy's name, but a right-hander. His ERA was low, and uh, he didn't record an out because our guys were just dialed in and just hitting line drives all over the field and um, putting pressure on their uh, pitcher and their defense. So uh, I'm all super pumped for our guys because, you know, when you have one of your best offensive players, Jacob Starling, he's, he's not just a great offensive player, but he's a leader on our team too. And him being out and, you know, Colby having to go in there and, and play third, and Dixon having to move to second. And um, I, I just thought those guys played great this weekend um, and never missed a beat. Uh, Wyatt Lunch for Sheikman, Coach, you touched on him earlier, but three innings yesterday and I think nine appearances in a row, he's gone multiple innings and obviously pitched extremely well. Just his ability to come in almost in any situation and, and deliver, pitch out of a jam, go multiple innings, what, what is he you know, doing that, that's so effective? What does he mean to your back end of the bullpen? I mean, obviously he's got good stuff, man. I mean, his slider is real, and then he's you know mixing in his fastball and he's throwing a change up every once in a while as well to the lefties. And, but it's his mentality. I mean, when the guy comes in, he's out there. He's aggressive uh, for the most part in the strike zone with really good stuff. And he's extremely competitive. And, um, I mean, he's our guy when we need to get out of a jam. I mean, he's the guy that we go to. And, um, of course, that wasn't the plan for him to go that long yesterday. But he was like, Coach, I feel great. And uh, we needed him yesterday, I can tell you that, because it was getting hairy. And, uh, for him to be able to come into that bases loaded jam and only giving up two runs and then pitching the eighth and ninth and even pitching around an error in the ninth, uh, special stuff. Cliff Godwin uh, joined Steve and I go myself as we uh, talk pirate baseball ECU with the, uh, the series win in uh, Boca Raton over Florida Atlantic over the uh, weekend. Uh, Pirates will uh, play five games this week, uh, including uh, the Charlotte series. First ever uh, matchup in the American between the two. That is uh, going to be happening this weekend at Clark LeClaire Stadium during the uh, Pigskin weekend. So it'll be uh, be a festive weekend as it always is. Weather is looking uh, really nice uh, for uh, the days that the Pirates are uh, scheduled to play, and that's always a good thing. Uh, Cliff, uh, Dixon Williams, how's... Uh, how, how do you think he is, is playing at this point? It seems like, you know, whether it's making uh, some spectacular plays in the field, third, second, wherever he is, at the plate starting to see some results, uh, it seems like he's more comfortable. Yeah, he's just playing with more confidence. I mean, that's one thing that you can imagine, you know, guys from Greenville, North Carolina, um, he wants to play well for East Carolina University. I mean, it's his hometown and, I think at times people from Greenville, when they play here, it might be harder for them, you know, like a Bryant Packard or Davis Kirkpatrick, just because they grew up here and everybody knows who they are. But uh, I was super happy for him on Tuesday, the, the way he played um, at NC State in a hostile environment uh, with all the media stuff that you guys put out there going into the game and stuff. And, uh, of course, he drives in the first two runs. He makes a Sports Center top 10 play out in left field that would have been a big momentum swing for NC State because they had a runner at second base. Uh, at the time, no outs. That ball falls in, run scores, uh, probably another guy at second base, and uh, he makes that catch, and they don't score a run. So um, Dixon's been great. He moved over to second base uh, because of Starling's injury this weekend, mm -hmm. never missed a beat, um, swung the bat well. Um, this weekend and just is playing with a lot more confidence, which is great to see. With uh, Starling, what, what uh, are you thinking his week will look like potentially? Oh, man, I, I would say best case scenario Friday. Um, that's what we're keeping our fingers crossed um, with. It's a oblique injury, uh, which those are tricky. Um, obviously, swinging a bat and running, uh, all that happens in your core. So um, he did it on a check swing at NC State on um, – Tuesday night, and probably nobody knew it, but he couldn't play defense on the, in the ninth inning. That's why he came out of the game. It wasn't me just getting him off his feet. Um, he was like, Coach, I can't play defense. So we got him out of the game, and, of course, it was a tough weekend for him. He's from Florida. 
his mom, sister, a ton of family down there. And right, um, right. I, you know, felt terrible for him, but I just kept loving on him and saying, Hey man, like we need you at the end of the season more than we need you this weekend. And I know you want to play, but, uh, uh, we're going to get him healthy. So he, he'll be, uh, ready to go down the stretch run. Uh, Colby Wallace inserted uh, into the uh, lineup in the FAU series and uh, playing third where uh, it, it seems like he's got a, a, a an opportunity to kind of be the guy in the future uh, there. But he drives in a run each day, gets a hit. Uh, and, and in the vein of Dixon Williams, just kind of the update on on Wallace, who has a tremendous head of hair, but also, uh, you know, as a freshman, that's the other thing that's never easy is coming to the program and and be someone that does contribute meaningfully as a freshman yeah colby's kind of a throwback though i mean he uh is a guy that uh obviously looks physically older than a freshman um as you guys yeah. would uh say um but he, he doesn't say a whole lot lot um at practice uh we would like for him to talk a little bit more but he just shows up and goes to work and uh you know coaches appreciate that his teammates appreciate that he's gotten a lot better since the day he stepped foot on campus and a lot of credit goes to Jeff Palumbo working with him defensively also coach Lartigue and Brock Packard working with him offensively um, he has gotten head and shoulders better than when the day he first got here but it's been he's willing to work um, he does have a competitive edge to him it's a quite quiet competitiveness but um, he never seems like the moment's too big and a lot of times freshmen do make the moment too big, um, especially this day and age, because there's a lot older players out there because of the portal and stuff. I was going to ask you about Coach Colby's his arm strength at third. Obviously, you can just tell he, he's able to make a ton of big-time throws. How, how far has he come defensively just in terms of his glove work, his range? Because obviously with that arm, he, it seems like he can be a pretty special defender in time. Yeah, no question. I mean, I think early in the fall, just his first step quickness wasn't to the level that – we would like um, to play a high level third base, uh, but he went over there. He wasn't scared. Um, to be honest with you, we were working him out more at first base early in the preseason in the spring just because. But then in BP, I was like, man, he's moving better. Um, so it's a credit to him. He's putting a lot of work, like I said, with Jeff, and um, he's just gotten more. Um, confident over there he plays out front with one one hand with your glove and secures the baseball and obviously he's got a big arm so that helps when you're playing on the left side of the infield uh five game week coach and obviously that that brings a big challenge in itself how important is it for you know some other pitchers who maybe haven't thrown in a while to step up this week because I, I assume they're definitely going to get opportunities yeah i mean there's a lot of guys and you know we kept harping on it even um after last weekend um, at home at UAB, you know, we didn't use a lot of pitchers. Of course, we kind of used some of the same guys at NC State. But I told them yesterday after the game, hey, some of you guys that have wanted some opportunities is coming. You know, we got five games in five days, so it'll be good. Those guys have worked hard. Uh, we have confidence in those guys. So um, we need the older guys to continue to encourage those guys that get the opportunities. But um, we're excited about it, and we just need to have that closers mentality that we've had. Um, in a few games when Trey and Root are not starting. Um, just go out there and close out innings. Yeah, I was going to ask, too, the toughest part about a five-game week, Coach, is it just the, the mental grind? Do, do you guys even practice at all, or is it more just your, your focus on the game? And I don't know, do, do guys maybe just enjoy playing the games more so than practicing? <clears throat> well, I mean, I, you'll probably be proud of me, but our older players have had more time off this year. Um, than they've ever had um, leading up into this week. Uh, just getting guys off their feet like a JC, a Carter Cunningham, a Starling, a Joey Barini. You know, uh, JC got hit in his hand a couple weeks ago, and he's still not 100% swinging, but so to limit his swings, Joey obviously limits his swings because of his wrist. Um, Riley Johnson hardly ever swings when we're not playing games uh, to keep him healthy. So we have done that, but we're just going to take it one day at a time. Today will be uh, our guys lifting, getting a lot of treatment in with uh, Logan, our athletic trainer, and just getting their bodies fresh. And, and look, we're home. I um, mean, just after being on the road for all week, we're super excited about being home. We need Pirate Nation to come out every night, day, support our guys. They're playing great. 
Uh, we don't play perfectly, but this team has a knack of winning even when uh, we don't play our best baseball, which is a great quality, to be honest with you. I mean, yesterday wasn't pretty, but I was super proud of our guys, just the resilience that they showed and the togetherness that they showed just to continue to fight and to be able to win a series on the road. Coach, uh, out of that pen, who are some guys maybe that are on the come a little bit that uh, you feel like are, are just there to be able to, to contribute that we could see this week? Um, I think Jaden Winter will start a game. I think Corey Costello will start a game. Of course, uh, De Lorenzo will get out there. Chris Kaler will get out there. Norby will be available, maybe not uh, tomorrow, but Wednesday. So, um, And then some other guys, uh, maybe Parker Thomas, uh, Eric Ritchie will be out there at some point in time again. Danny Bill will be uh, available tomorrow as well. Um, Shinkman and Jake Hunter will not be available um, Tuesday, Wednesday. So um, we'll be giving the ball to somebody else uh, instead of those two guys. Gotcha. Uh, what will be some of the things just on the whole, maybe even uh, offensively, that you'll be looking for this week and as you get ready uh, for Charlotte and as you get through these five games? I ain't getting ready for Charlotte. We're, we're getting ready for Elon. So, uh, and offensively, we just want our guys to continue to keep the chain connected offensively, whatever our plan is, um, to do that and to put pressure on the opposing pitcher and their defenses. Coach Godwin, thanks for the time. Always great to catch up with you. Really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. There's our conversation with head coach Cliff Goblin. We'll get our final break in. We'll come back. We'll wrap up the show. This is Hoist the Colors. Hi, I'm D.R. Alligood. And I'm his daughter, Jessica. For 11 years, we have built quality driveways and parking lots for both your residential and commercial needs. We also offer free on-site quotes to have your custom driveways built the way you want. 252-946-1227. about you, your family, and the health of all who live in Eastern North Carolina. This is about the transformation of a health system into something more powerful and more human, about creating new ways to treat disease and keep you well. This is about ECU Health, which is to say, it's really all about you. ECU Health, minds, hearts, purpose. Fifth Street Hardware is the home of the $9 lunch special Tuesday through Fridays. $9 specials every day, including the famous Burger Day on Tuesdays, Flatbread Pizza Wednesday, the famous Fifth Street Hardware Reuben on Thursday, and Fried Fish or Shrimp on Friday. Plus, trivia on Wednesday nights and live music every Thursday nights. And the Prime Rib Brunch Buffet has returned on Sundays. You heard that right. The Brunch Buffet with all the great items, including Prime Rib, 5th Street Hardware in downtown Greenville. Your confidence makes everything look good. You see the world in vivid color, not black and white. Swing through your neighborhood fantastic Sam's Cut in color. And let our experienced stylists take you from everyday to extraordinary. Fantastic Sam's hair salons are locally owned and operated. Our full-service salons are conveniently located in Goldsboro, Kinston, Greenville, Newburn, Jacksonville, and Calabash. Stop in today at Fantastic Sam's, where the possibilities are endless. Hi, I'm D.R. Alligood. And I'm his daughter, Jessica. For 11 years, we have built quality driveways and parking lots for both your residential and commercial needs. We also offer free on-site quotes to have your custom driveways built the way you want. 252-946-1227. What's happening? Tell me. Every ECU fan's one stop for all things ECU athletics. This is Hoist the Colors with Stephen Igo on 94.3 The Game. 
Welcome back in. Hoist the colors on this Monday. you got about a minute and a half left. We've talked a lot of baseball. Let's do a quick update on the Interbanks Media Bracket Challenge. We are down to two. Bobby Harward, our usual Wednesday guest, will join us tomorrow. And Scott Rogers, play-by-play -play announcer for ECU Baseball. It has come down to them. Bobby had UNC over Purdue in the championship, so he can no longer gain any more points. He is in the lead. And then Scooter has UConn winning it all. He would win if UConn wins tonight. UConn is a six-and-a-half-point favorite at last check heading into tonight's title game against Purdue. Phillip, who you got between the Boilermakers and Huskies? I'm going to go Huskies. I just think they're the better team all around. If Klingon can get in there and stop Zach Eady, it could get ugly. I don't think that happens. I think Klingon plays him tough, but I, th I think Eady still gets his. Keeps it respectable, but I think UConn does in the end. Should be a great game and definitely uh, an interesting matchup. And I think, you know, the, the matchup between truly probably the two best teams in the tournament. I know obviously Houston uh, was up there and certainly UNC was a deserving top seed as well. But I felt like Purdue and UConn, for the most part, have been the two best teams throughout the year. So it should be a fascinating game. It's just if UConn plays to its potential, it will be tough to see them losing. Certainly could happen. 920 Eastern tip-off, right, Phil? So it's going to be a late yeah. night for us East Coast folks. Um, but such is the life of these national championship games. Why do we have to cater to those weirdos on the West Coast? I know, man. It's just... We got to we got to fix this Monday night late tip off or late kickoff championship stuff. But TV, baby, TV rules all. All right. I want to say thanks to Carter Cunningham for coming in studio. Appreciate his hospitality and uh, great stuff today, as always, from Carter. Cliff Godwin as well. We'll be back tomorrow, 12 noon with Bobby Harward. We'll see you then. This has been Hoist the Colors with your host, Stephen Igo. Tune in weekdays at noon for all things ECU sports. Get a recap of the show at 943thegame.com, on Twitter, Facebook, or anywhere you get your podcasts. We're back tomorrow with 